Frameworks are powerful, well-designed packs of code created by many experienced developers. I'm not against using them, but if you want to become a successful engineer, your skill set needs to go much deeper than frameworks. And maybe you need to go on a journey from frameworker to programmer to engineer. Let's look at each of these phases of the journey. Just because you primarily work in a framework doesn't mean you're a frameworker, but you might be. Frameworks allow a frameworker to build software products in a way similar to how IKEA allows me to build shelving units. When the work is done, did I make a shelving unit? Yes. Should I be describing myself as a shelf engineer? Probably not. Now the question is, what is a frameworker lacking? Frameworkers usually do not have a good knowledge of the basics of the programming language that the framework is written in, because frameworks are purposefully designed in a way that allows the frameworker to get all of the functionality with very few lines of code. Frameworkers also lack depth of knowledge in programming. But does any of this matter? Yes, frameworking can negatively impact a frameworker's career. As frameworkers do not have a solid understanding of fundamentals, they often don't see exponential growth in their skills with experience. So if you are only working with the frameworks, try exploring other open source or personal projects to gain an in-depth knowledge of the programming language. This will help you move out of the frameworker phase. Now, the programmer phase. Programmer is someone who lives in code. And by that, I mean two things. They read a lot of code and write many different kinds of code. Reading good code is one of the best ways to learn how to write good code as a beginner. You'll learn to cover edge cases and handle exceptions like a professional. So, if you have the ability to read and write code for basic functionalities like input-output sockets and event loops, buffers, hash generation, and tail recursion, you can become a good programmer. So, when do you become an engineer? Imagine that you're building your own car from parts. But as you're assembling it, every time you need to attach one stationary part to another, you weld them together instead of using nuts and bolts. You could potentially build a car that works well at first, but then imagine that something breaks and it's in a hard to reach area, so you need to remove other parts to access it. That welding choice turns out to be a problem and you start to see why nuts and bolts would have been better. This happens because you don't fully understand car building principles. Similarly, in coding, lacking knowledge of engineering principles can cause issues. However, I'm not saying that you've completely ignored good engineering principles. Think of it like language development. As a programmer, you're gaining native speaker fluency with the languages you work in. As an engineer, you'll start planning code in advance, creating software that balances stability and adaptability. Planning flexible code is especially helpful for building large-scale software. By writing code that's both stable and easy to modify, you'll be on your way to becoming an engineer.